get that brand new chain down in the dirt. I just cut this out because this is where we'll be, this is where we'll be walking to carry the other pieces. Less chance of tripping over it. And right now it's really green. See, this is where you can see kind of the deception of firewood. On the outside, you'd think that's a good seasoned piece. You can see all that sap inside and it's very heavy. It's not even close to being seasoned. Hi, Chad with Purple Color Life. I'm gonna do some work outside today. It's been a beautiful day here in Northwest Pennsylvania. Still chilly. It's in the 40s, but warmer than it has been the last few days. I've got the MS290 out because it is my most reliable chainsaw. That MS271, I did a video earlier in the winter about how it wasn't running right. It let me down. Then I did a video about doing a tune-up on it. It seemed to be running fine. Well, now it's not running right again. Seems like the, uh, the winter of problems here. I've got that 271. I can't get to work right. You can see I'm using the Ranger here, but that's just because... The snow's melted enough now that it's fine in two wheel drive because the all wheel drive's not working. So on the MS290 today, before we get started cutting, I haven't replaced this chain in a long time and that's because I use the steel two in one file and sharpen it every time I use it. But I do have a brand new chain here. Now remember that on the MS290, these nuts are not captive, so they do not stay on the machine. I've bought plenty of replacement for these because I've lost them in the woods. This is always a good time to make sure that the oil port holes are open. That the chain track is open. This steel chain is the 26 RS67 yellow. You can see it does have the yellow marker on it. Go ahead and fill this up with Moto Mix. You can see it's cold enough that the bar and chain oil is pretty stringy. Thick like molasses as it pours out. You can see this chain still has plenty of life left on the teeth. Plenty of length on those teeth. I found that sharpening with the steel two-in-one chain sharpener actually seems to extend the life of the chain because I'm just touching it up every time I use it rather than a full sharpening. Ignition button all the way down. After it starts to run, one click up. Doesn't it feel good though to look at this whole way across here that we didn't own last year and now we own? I should have brought Olive's leash with us. She won't cross her borderline. Well, I could get the whole way up through here with the side by side on this path. Not without four wheel drive. Colder out than you thought. So I talked in a previous video about the firewood shortage and I think that firewood shortage will only get worse over the next few years. I'm seeing a couple indicators of that. First of all, firewood suppliers are all out of wood and it's the middle of February. So that means they're gonna be struggling for wood next year, prices will be higher. Log splitter prices have gone crazy. Lead times are 14 to 18 months for a log splitter. So I think that means the demand for firewood is only going to increase. 
So starting today, we're gonna get started on our firewood supply for next year. Again, we don't sell the firewood, but it does heat our home. So I just found a couple easy trees to get to up there. Small things, probably won't even need split. And that'll be the start of a new stock of firewood for us for next winter. If you follow our Instagram page, Purple Color Life on Instagram, I posted about this old cabin in the woods. You can see here, it did at one point have electricity, but this is a cabin that when my dad's mother, so my grandmother, was just a child, this cabin was here and they probably played in it. Their house was just across the road. And you can see there was a little bed frame here. Well, they wouldn't have had electric that long ago. Well, maybe they had electric afterwards, I'm not sure. Yeah. But there is a bed frame here and you can see it was the uh, traditional like green paint color. Back then when sheds and little cottages, they'd always paint them like that weird green color. Uh -huh. That little bed frame. Yeah. That's just a toddler bed. Yeah, that wood is now the stuff that people are trying to recreate. Yeah. It's all tongue and groove. Tongue and groove hardwood. Yeah, I absolutely love Chad that we finally had the opportunity to buy this piece. Yeah. Hey, Olive's staying down there in her yard. She knows her boundary. She has an electric fence under the ground, but she doesn't realize she doesn't have her shock collar on anymore because she doesn't need it. She knows the border. She stays where she's supposed to stay. So I'm going to be cutting this one and this one. I'll cut this one first. The plan is to just let it fall right across the path and then maybe we can drag it down closer to the side by side. Now that one on your left, is that one of those diseased cherry trees? It looks like it was, yeah. See this right here, you mean? Well, both of them. But yeah. So this is a, a nice big size cherry tree. And this is a smaller one, but you can tell it had the same disease. And this one has it right here. And didn't they recommend we cut down every single cherry that has that because it's just going to yeah. keep spreading? But Because it's like an airborne fungus. Um, they explained it's not something that grows from the inside out. It's something that gets from cherry tree to cherry tree. And as long as it's on one of them, it'll spread to the others within yeah. wind blowing distance. Well, just think about when we were trimming trees across the road and that small limb about that size came down and hit you and right. that yep. definitely you were really sore. So would you rather cut it here and carry it down in chunks or try to drag it down? I think we should see how heavy it is and drag it. There's a nice cherry here. This is just kind of an offshoot from that cherry. I was gonna cut it down and use it for firewood, but I think I'd just leave it up. It's all pithy. It would be no good for firewood. No sense in cutting it down right now. We'll let the uh, animals make use of it. I've actually said this is a different type of wood. You know, in a previous video, I said the trees vary depending on where you are on our land. This is a different type of woods than the rest of our property. A lot of our property is very swampy. This piece is very nice, it's fairly open. We do have some saplings coming up, but it's got some good growth on it, some older trees. Good piece of land. And we've been saving for the past 15 years just in hopes that someday we'd have the opportunity to buy it. Right, yeah. So yep. I'm glad that we didn't just dream about it and not make a plan for it. Right. I chose this spot to cut because of this old apple tree. I'll be able to leave the uh, pieces on top of it and cut them that will keep me from putting my brand new chain down in the dirt. As you know, the chain in the dirt is what dolls it the fastest. So keeping it out of the dirt 
makes it last a lot longer. You get better cuts, your cutting is more efficient. Now Jennifer's gonna cut this one up. I don't mind chainsaws and guns as long as I'm not the one running it. Steel's always looking for yeah. women of steel. What about assist steel assistance? Yeah. <laughs> Right there's Olive. She's been standing waiting for us. Her yard ends before the wood starts. So she's waiting just within her yard to not come beyond the fence line. She's waiting for her mom. She's waiting for her mom. Yeah, this feels nice and light. You can tell from the color of it that it's cherry. We'll get the moisture meter on it and see what it breaks. Hey, you're right at your border. Stay in your yard. Here, girl. I did bring the moisture meter down. We'll do some moisture tests on it. But I was mentioning at the start of the video, I think I'm predicting that next winter will be even more of a firewood shortage than this, this winter. Not, not just for us, but I mean in general. Why is that? More and more people are burning firewood. More people burnt through more over the last couple years because of the pandemic, like staying home more. So then that created a surge of people that needed more and now there's just not enough. The, I was saying that uh, people left a comment on my log splitter video that their orders are out 14 to 18 months now for a log splitter. Oh, wow. So I think the demand for firewood has increased the demand for log splitters. And I think it's only gonna get worse in the next year because there's less and less of a backlog of supply, kind of another supply chain issue with firewood that, you know, Firewood suppliers had a pretty good supply until the last three years, and I think they sold out. If you watch Outdoors with the Morgans, he sold out. Um, people who just sold firewood as a hobby, I think they went through their stockpile in the last couple of years. Oh, yeah, because it's not like you can just go cut it down and then sell it. Right. You've got to cut it down, wait a couple of years. Yep. Well, prior to the pandemic, you really only built a fire on Saturdays and Sundays. Right, and or now, in the evening if we were home, but we, we didn't burn very, that much wood. Very rarely, though. You didn't get home until seven o'clock. Right. All right, we're gonna do some moisture meter tests here. Okay. So let's take this piece of cherry, for example. Well, that's not a very fair one. It's got snow on the outside. It's dry. Okay, so Jennifer says feels dry. Let's see how it is here on the outside. 10.7. See how it is here on the center. says 12 that's still easily thrown into the fireplace 12 why does an apple burn well it, i don't know it's just not a great wood i think it's got a lot of sap in it so here's the outside of the apple 13.8 here's the center 55.3 55 48.6 47 that was a tree on the ground that we cut up in order to make it easier to yeah.
Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. I always like it when Jennifer's in the videos with me. A lot of times she's behind the camera. Today she was able to get in front of the camera a little bit and help me cut down some of this wood. Just a small little supply of wood here, even some small pieces like this. I do really believe there will be a severe firewood shortage next year. For those of you that cut your own wood like me, highly recommend every chance you get getting out and cutting some wood. Like today, wasn't a whole lot of time before it got dark here. A busy day today, but anything you can cut to help with the uh, amount of wood you have in a stockpile for the next winter helps out. Whether it's half an hour, hour, or a couple hours, it'll certainly be wood you will appreciate come the next winter when it's time to heat your home. Thanks for watching. If this video entertained you or helped you in any way, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you again the next time. As always, as soon as you're running the side-by-side, -side, the deer come in. They saw Jennifer put some corn out for them. So there we've got four coming in to get the corn. <laughs>